what is up everybody i'm mr man welcome back to my channel today we are going to be talking about the gold rush what made the value of gold in our society convertible to the u.s dollar so important which is breton uh, the breton woods um conferences that they held in 1944 similar time and then now 2004 what we're going to be looking at is the new breton woods essentially new breton woods the digital breton woods which is a conference that was held by the imf the world bank the iosco and the oecd all right this is how this is going to work this is what's going down you have exclusive access to listen to these things for this particular video i was the 35th person 35th person on this youtube channel to watch this video and now all you guys are brought into this enjoy while the bretton woods conference of 1944 and the gold rushes of the 20 of the 19th century are distinct historical events they are connected through the role of gold and the, in the international monetary system the gold rushes increase global gold reserves which underpin the gold standard the Bretton Woods system, established decades later, relied on the U.S. dollar's convertibility to gold to establish international currencies and promote economic cooperation and growth post-World War II. But the point, and uh, this is uh, the, 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 the important, is that uh, so, given the level of uh, payments, cross-border payments, uh, luckily uh, we freedom of capital movements, also thanks to the important instrument managed by uh, historically by MF and in part also by us. So it's, uh, I think that uh, we should overcome this uh, uh, national and nationality issue. And so uh, I think we need, uh, I would say, a, a, a dual approach. So surely, uh, you know, uh, bottom up uh, but uh, but uh, but in part uh, top down honestly we have seen that in dramatic movements and uh, i use this uh, example and joke uh, uh, matil knows uh, i think that we had uh, you know <laughs> bretton wood bretton woods conference so i think we really need uh, a, a, a sort of new bretton woods uh, i would say for digital finance, uh, DeFi, for uh, crypto assets, for uh, CBDC, but we surely need that all the actors, and by the way, we have also different uh, international fora dealing with this, uh, but they have, uh, I would say, a different kind of, uh, of composition. In some cases, maybe, um, obviously, maybe central bankers and people interested in only say, in the macro stability side, but there are the micro stability, there are the investor protection. We need really a broad, uh, at least a uh, 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 place where we have to put together all the relevant, let's say, policy makers, regulators, supervisors, as broad as possible, okay, in order then to find also top down some, at least some principles that then can, can, can go down. I think this is essential in order to avoid also, uh, let's say, um, uh, tensions that I think uh, otherwise we may have much broader than, uh, than what we have experienced in the last, I would say, 20 years, a couple of times. Thank you, Matil. Gold was actually found by Mexicans in the 1830s in a couple different spots, Southern California, but not, not the gold fields that we associate with the gold rush. Well, the Mexicans had no idea, of course that gold of the amount discovered in the 1850s and 1860s actually existed there. But before California becomes a state, gold is discovered. And it's one of those transforming episodes in the American past. And the rush is on. The gold rush is maybe the classic American story. One of the funny things about the gold rush is that very few people actually made any money from gold itself. In Gold Rush, California, success followed a willingness to try and fail, and try and fail, and try and fail. In New England, where American culture originated, there wasn't a tolerance of failure like this. Failure was equated with sin and with moral failing. In California, the Gold Rush, none of that applied. Everybody understood that luck 
was as much a factor in success as anything else. The lure of quick money has just had an enormous attraction for the new America at that time. The scramble for mineral wealth, which is extremely ugly, it involves the rape of the countryside, the exploitation of Mexicans, the extermination of local tribes, the mistreatment of Asians who come in as laborers and are also very badly treated in the mines, the terrible loss of life and impoverishment of the people who go out and dig the stuff. This was a signal event that transformed the landscape, it transformed the demography of California in the West, and one could argue was a seismic shift in American history of the mid-19th century. Ironically, the great breakthrough of, of the gold rush was not creating fortunes from this precious metal found in the hills of California. It was, in a sense, the invention of California itself. I mean, it made this extraordinary city, San Francisco, and got enough people to move all the way out there that the state was able to really kind of turn into the extraordinary creature that it is today. Because we have five minutes left, I would like to give the floor to Tobias to, to react maybe to your suggestion, Carmine, and to tell us for him what are the next steps for, for the international policy community to, you know, reflect and act on all these challenges that we have been talking about, and, and more specifically, of course, for the IMF. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, so the mandate of the IMF um, and other international in institutions uh, is, of course, to foster multilateral cooperation um, and uh, to improve uh, the international monetary system, in particular uh, for the IMF. Um, so facilitating uh, the flow of capital, uh, the, f the stability uh, of monetary systems, um, you know, these are, these are very fundamental. Um, digital finance is changing the nature of the international monetary system. And as I alluded to at the very beginning, um, new technologies are very powerful and can potentially improve the financial system. But uh, it, it is important to align uh, the usage of the technologies with policy objectives. So that means um, having a stable monetary system, a stable financial system, um, uh, a financial system with integrity, i.e. where capital flows are legal, um, and um, one that is inclusive. And uh, I think there's a long way to go to achieve those goals. Uh, so uh, I would charter the path forward for the international community uh, to, to use new technologies in order to improve the stability, the efficiency, and the integrity uh, of the global financial system. Um, I think we have uh, some clarity about some elements, but there are many challenges ahead, and uh, it remains a very first order for international institutions to work with the membership, with the member central banks and the member regulators uh, to charter the path uh, forward. Let me stop here. Thank you, Tobias. And as a last point from Carmine, uh, what are the next steps for the OECD, to your view? This is, uh, again, this evolution is not the, the, the I think, and um, we can treat also from the international uh, organization and point of view as uh, business as usual. This is something very important to be careful to analyze and to see, again, uh, the impact. So the, I think the OECD and the OECD role traditionally and, uh, and also, first of all, is always to, to cooperate uh, and very important with, uh, with countries, with its members, with actually many of uh, also the other G20 international organization is to provide, uh, you know, uh, robust uh, analysis, evidence-based, uh, to translate these, if uh, uh, relevant, applicable, as we have done uh, also in the past, into uh, possibly, you know, policy guidance. And then I think in this case, maybe one of the, our strengths, uh, and actually today is also an example, is really to, to, to use and, uh, these, uh, let's say, convening powers. And so I think uh, that uh, 
again, it's, it's very, very important to, uh, before taking any measure decision, to, to, to talk, to have dialogue so to be together. So I think we can, uh, if, uh, if uh, uh, interesting uh, requested, we are obviously available uh, for all the international you know, community and, and the others to, to, at least to help in, in providing you know, the, uh, the setting for exchange and, and cooperation to translate, uh, I would say, evidence into, into action. We are in the digital gold rush era, you guys, and we are at the forefront of this technology taking, taking control and leading the world, leading the world in terms of its finances, DeFi, CBDCs, stable coins. The global regulators have come together, they have regulations set, and they are going to be implementing it. Smoke Dog told you guys in, that in 2025, we're sorry, December 15th, 2024, that 2025 will be a very, very important year. Because at the end of this year, the 2024, December 15th, the FSB stated that the fair market value of crypto assets will now be open and released to the world to go and take their own breaths and breathe their own value. No price manipulation. These are going to be held on balance sheets of businesses at this point. They will have a value to them. So, 2025 is going to be a bumpy year. What could we potentially see in that year? I've read you guys on several occasions a document by the John Hopkins uh, Institute for Health. They have a document called SPARS Pandemic 2025 to 2028. Look it up. The IMF is going to be having their spring annual spring meeting. I showed my buddy, my, my, my mentor, Cypress this, and I believe I showed Smoke Dog this already as well, that in 2024, 2025, the uh, IMF will be conducting, along with the World Bank's data, they will be conducting technical analysis on, this, on the currencies, on stable coins, on how well they fare during this bumpy ride we are going to be going through in 2024, 2025. And they will present this data both years, 2024, 2025, in the annual meetings they have. And then they will be collecting all that data and be presenting it in 2027. All right? I'm putting the puzzle pieces together for you guys here. The pandemic is 2025 to 2028. Data comes out 2027. Are we going to be at the tail end in 2028 at that point of this pandemic? All right? All right, sorry about that interruption there. There was something snapping and breaking out back there. Could have been a bear, could have been a deer, could have been whatever. I can't see shit out of this mask, so I didn't know. I know I saw a tree break, something push it and take, uh, take it down. Uh, I couldn't see a deer do that purposefully. I don't know what it was. That's neither here nor there. Anyways, I hope you guys found value in this video. Check me out. I'll catch you guys in the next one.